First of all, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rotana Network. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Uh, Oliver Khan, very few people, and I mean very few, knows that Oliver Khan is not only a football icon, he is also a successful businessman, very well-educated person with MBA, Harvard experience. What would you like to tell us about that? <laughs> um, well, yeah, first of all, I was, I was a goalkeeper, you know, and uh, I think uh, I have no problem with that. I think this is a long time ago, um, but that's my legacy, you know, and that's where I, that's where I come from. And I think uh, when I meet people on the street, everybody, everybody recognizes, everybody knows Oliver Kahn, the goalkeeper, uh, the aggressive guy, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, loud on the, on the football after playing for 30 years um, on the field. I want to do something different. And then I started um, studying again. As you said, I, I made my MBA on, on university again because I want to do uh, something different because life is not only football and I dreamt to be a great goalkeeper but I also dreamt to be a successful businessman an entrepreneur yes and that's why I um, after my career I uh, went this way you came here in 2017 at that time we had a dream and vision to develop our football system in, in, in every angle and you were one of the first people who believed in that. Why? Yes, I came to, to Saudi Arabia, Arabia in uh, 2017. And I worked together uh, with the Saudi Arabian Football Federation. We were um, doing some different, uh, different projects in goalkeeping, education, um, and things like this. And in this time, I felt this um, yes, this creative atmosphere. I felt this atmosphere um, of change, and everyone was uh, very uh, ambitious. And uh, yes, I I like that. And yes, then uh, unfortunately, then came uh, the COVID, COVID, the COVID crisis. And uh, after that, I returned to Bayern Munich as the uh, in the board. Um, and then. Um, but I try to help my connections here to the people, also to the Saudi Arabian Football uh, uh, Federation or to the Ministry, uh, Ministry of Sport. So I try to stay connected. What made you at that time believe that this dream might come true? I was in the stadium. I remember, I think it was a game um, in the King's Cup, I don't, I don't remember exactly, and I felt the enthusiasm, and I felt the atmosphere, and uh, the atmosphere was great, and uh, people in Saudi Arabia they were um, so enthusiastic about about football, and they were absolutely ambitious, and based on the on the vision of the Crown Prince, based on the vision uh, 2030. Um, which was at the beginning in, 20, uh, in 2017, which yes. was still coming up, I felt, uh, yes, that people, they want to reach something and they want to build something, also, uh, also in football. A lot of good players and talented moved to Saudi Arabia uh, this summer, and this provoked some of the world media, and they were having comments. Some of them are negative and positive. What do you want to say about that? You know, from my point of view, it's always, um, it's always good for football, you know, to create competition, to also create competition um, um, between the leagues. And investing in football, this is never, uh, could never be a bad thing. What do you want to say to the, to the media in Europe, that were, who they were attacking and uh, th th this project? Mm. I think... Everything is changing. The world is changing in, in, in various ways, uh, in all segments, in all sectors, and also uh, in football. 
So we see different competitors come up, we see uh, different leagues uh, come up, we see different formats arising like the new Champions League format of the UEFA which will come now um, in the next season. So that's, that's, that's our world. So money is not enough to develop a football system. No, I think we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of examples where you see that money is not enough. Um, also, also, also in Europe, because only buying players this is not enough. You have to find um, the right mixture, the right balance uh, in a in a in a team. You have to develop um, your own players, and then you have to monetize your fan base in a in in the right way. And to bring all this together. That's what I said. Then you need people with this, with this experience in football who uh, know how you can handle uh, such a situation and how you can start now um, from this point where Saudi football is at the moment. What is the differences that you noticed in Saudi Arabia uh, since your first visit in 2017 mm. and today? Well, um, I think Yes, I think a lot changed, uh, especially the the the, uh, the visa process. <laughs> it's going it's going much more uh, it's going Easier. much it's going much more faster now. So you see how uh, digitization digitization comes in and makes everything makes everything a little bit faster and and easier. I think the quality of life uh, is the quality of life here is uh, is is rising. Yeah. Uh, mm. And um, yes, um, you have here a lot of people here. Uh, I have a lot of friends here, and I'm always um, yes, I'm always yeah, fine to come uh, to come to your to your country and see uh, what's going on. I mean, um, even uh, the younger the younger generations uh, in Saudi Arabia, I think this is for them. It's also yeah, it's also great. To have um, this kind of vision in the country, which they can, uh, yeah, which they can thrive for. Okay, future-wise, if, if you get the opportunity to work here, would you move your wife and kids with you here, or you would come alone? No, if I would go to uh, to another country with a uh, with a job where I have to be uh, uh, 24 hours per day, where I have to work 24 hours per day, uh, then, then absolutely, yes. And it's a very interesting, very interesting story. Um, uh, I remember sitting with my 12-year-old uh, son uh, uh, in front of the TV, and uh, suddenly he said to me, Ah, Oliver, I must, I, I must uh, look now the uh, Saudi Arabia League, because Ronaldo is playing, Benzema is playing. And uh, this was really, this was really amazing. Uh. On the way to the studio, my son called me, and he's nine years old, and he gave me a question to, to give you, uh, to ask you, and he said, from a young fan, why you never smile? <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you think that's right? <laughs> this is his question. Yeah, I know that. I know that people are people are telling that maybe maybe because they only see me in TV and they only see me playing football and there and for me it was not much fun yeah. <laughs> on the field conceding a goal you know in the last few days there was a statement by by Van Gaal the the uh, coach of Netherland national team saying that last world cup that was hosted by Qatar was planned to be given to Messi by FIFA. Well, I know Van Gaal, and uh, he's saying a lot of things sometimes. So I'm not really sure if he really, if he really uh, said uh, something like this. Maybe he has some some uh, problems with uh, with Messi, with Messi in the past. And no, when I um, watched the games. For me, it was amazing, amazing how the Argentinian team were fighting for one guy. They were fighting uh, for Messi, and uh, that he uh, can win together with the team uh, the World Cup. 
Finally, what do you want to say to your fans around the world? Stay engaged and be inspired from the greatest game in the world. Once again, Oliver Khan, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Shukran jazeera.